Paul. I said in 1955, Babson Brothers Company, uh, the year the patents ran out, we had 76% of the bucket milker business, and of course then everybody built Chinese copies. But in addition to that, Babson Brothers Company also recognized that there was a new way of milking cows, and that happened to be pipeline milkers. In fact, some of the initial work done, the experimental work done on pipeline milkers was done by, by Henry Babson and J.C. Penny at his Jersey farm in the St. Louis area. Uh, pipelines are nothing more than a means of conveying milk through glass or stainless steel into some receiving equipment that is then going to pump the milk into holding tanks uh, in the milk room. Uh, this is an example of this glass and, of, and, and maze of, of glass and stainless steel. Uh, it certainly is considerably more complicated and complex than, than uh, bucket milking, and as a result of that, Babson recognized that at the same time we install sophisticated equipment, we were going to have to have a trained man call on that farm with consistent regularity to maintain it, just as we had to have a trained man call on a surge bucket user. And so as a result of developing and installing pipeline milkers, we recognized that we had to improve the service program to maintain this equipment at peak operating efficiency. In addition to developing pipelines, we also recognized that it would be a lot easier if we could get the cows up off the floor, and as a result, milking parlors entered into it. Milking parlors are nothing more than moving cows onto an elevated level, higher than where the man is standing to milk cows, and as a result, when these were introduced into the 50s, uh, milking parlors entered into it. Uh, we elected to put also uh, ventilation design, an easy, clean place for the dairyman to milk rather than the uh, bottom end and in the corner of uh, existing stanchion barns. And so a whole new technology developed into pipeline milking, into parlor milking uh, that started in the early 50s. Uh, Babson was also instrumental in introducing and bringing onto the market the very first electrobrain. Uh, this was a device that would rinse, wash, and sanitize the pipeline in place because the original pipelines had rubber couplings and they had to be torn apart and they were very, very difficult to keep clean. Automation developed where we could have CIP equipment and Babson Brothers was instrumental with the electrobrain. Uh, vacuum pumps, of course, became much bigger. When I started, the two of the four vacuum pumps that uh, was in the product line, I could carry two of them into the barn. Uh, certainly the vacuum pumps that exist today, some of them even need, have to have a forklift to carry them around. But equipment became considerably more uh, sophisticated, and as a result, uh, we recognized that uh, service would become considerably more sophisticated. And here's where Babson Brothers Company then developed the route program. The means to the ends was basically chemicals. Babson recognized that as we put in sophisticated equipment, it was going to require a trained man to call in that farm with enough regularity to maintain it at peak operating efficiency. And one of the means uh, to the ends was certainly developing a chemical product line where the dairyman would use chemicals over a period of time on, let's say, a monthly basis, where a surge dealer could have trained manpower call on the men, drop off the detergents, and at the same time, then check over the equipment to make sure that it was operating at peak efficiency. As Dr. Herrick once said, a milking machine is the only piece of equipment that operates on living tissue. Isn't it important that it operate right? And that was a little bit of our concept with the route program. So by taking chemicals, we had a means of going out there with consistent regularity and developing a service program and a route program. Uh, we came up with the slogan, Surge Sanitation stands for a lot more than clean. And what that really means is having a trained man going on that farm, and at the same time he was dropping off detergents, he was able to check over the equipment, and if there was something not working quite right, he could fix it to make sure that it was operating at the peak efficiency necessary to produce a quality product, milk. So pipelines enter into the thing, they become more sophisticated, training becomes more important. Where we initially had our training program up at, at uh, Belvedere, Illinois, uh, and we had it there for a number of years. We then moved and bought a farm in the late 60s, and, we, and it was in uh, Plato Center, Illinois, and uh, it was called the Surge Training Center, and that happens to be a picture of it. Uh, we had a parlor that uh, we used for demonstration purposes. We remodeled the inside of the barn. We had surge dealers and all their men 
Uh, we used it for training for many, many years. In fact, we used that facility until, until we developed the surge training program here at our Naperville facility. Uh, this uh, shows you some of the incorporation of some of the, the training that we have. Here are some of the different schools that we have, uh, uh, the specialist schools that we have for uh, surge dealers and uh, their trained personnel that call on dairy farms. Babson also had the second largest dairy publication in the country. We called it Dairy Illustrated. It's a name that we still use and we're very, very carefully protected. And we had the second largest dairy publication in the country. Uh, another marketing idea that went away one day, one day we decided that we wanted to have a picture of Babson's entire product line. And so we elected in one October day that we would take our entire product line, display it at our training center, and then of course use it in, uh, in advertising. And so this picture depicts that. Uh, when we took that picture, I recall being out there. In fact, I happened to be standing underneath the U. Uh, we started taking this picture when the sun was starting to rise in the east. And if you'll look, the sun was starting to set in the west. The wind was blowing 100 miles an hour. It was an awful day. It's not a very good picture. But it's certainly one that I can assure you the manpower that was involved to put this thing together, it should be magnificent. We're now into the 1970s and pipeline milking is becoming more prevalent on dairy farms throughout the country. And just as there was an evolution in bucket milkers, there was an evolution in pipeline milking. Here you can see the uh, evolution of pipeline milkers. We had initially a breaker cup and we then went to mini cups and we even had what we call a QTO milker which was a unit certainly well before its time. The concept and idea is still right because this was quarter milking. Unfortunately, we didn't have the technology when it was introduced in the 70s and it turned out to be a maintenance nightmare. Uh, however, I predict that certainly sometime in the year 2002 or 2005, quarter milking will again become very prevalent and uh, will be the unit uh, uh, of the future. Uh, so pipelines changed, and just as pipeline units changed, pipelines became much bigger because herds got bigger. And now instead of inch and inch and a half and two inch pipe, we're now selling three and four inch, and there are some installations on the west coast that are even six inch. As a result of the equipment becoming larger, it also becomes more sophisticated, and we have to have a trained man call on that farm with certainly a lot better training and a lot better background to make sure that it's operating at peak efficiency. Uh, water treatment enters into it. Uh, just as we now have bigger pipelines, we're going to be using more chemicals, and it's important that we now have water treatment also involved to make sure that we remove some of the chemicals uh, in the water supply so that the, the detergents and the acids and the sanitizers are certainly a lot more compatible and uh, can be used certainly a, a a lot more economically on a dairy farm and so we have uh, a product line of water treatment that uh, is required to treat water supplies that exist on dairies. Pipelines get bigger, they get more complex, you can see they're much larger, they're heavy duty uh, and this is all in relation to herd size. But in addition to a milking parlor, there's a lot of other aspects of dairying that enter into it. And so Babson Brothers Company also has to work very, very closely with a lot of other segments of the dairy industry to make sure that the entire facility works. We